Welcome everyone to our wheel setup guide for SRX The Game. And in order to set up our wheel and pedal set, we'll first need to hop over to the options menu, which is the last one to the far right. I'm going to select the A button. I am playing on the PC through the Steam platform using a Logitech wheel and pedal set. So keep that in mind as we go through today's video. Now you have three different options that will pertain to your wheel and pedal set, starting with the player one controls, then player two controls if you're using local multiplayer, and then finally the input mapping. Now I have not touched the input mapping. By default, everything uh, came in just fine for the control using both the Logitech G920 wheel and pedal set, as well as the uh, keyboard controls as well. So, so far so good there. I have not made any changes to that. So we'll focus our attention on the player one controls. As I press accept to select the steering wheel, the first option is the degrees of rotation. I recommend leaving this at the default for your particular wheel, which for me is 900, but you can see the max is 1080 degrees all the way down to 100. And 80 but again I recommend leaving this at the default for your particular wheel now as we move into the main set of options for the wheel and pedal set we start with the shift type so this is if you have chosen in the options menu the manual transmission how do you want to shift gears for me I'm going to be using the paddle shifters that come with the wheel or there is the stick shift option available if you do have that particular option then what about the uh, clutch? Is do you want to use the clutch pedal or not? I choose not to use the clutch, so I'm gonna leave that on off. Then we get into the force speed feedback. Starting with the driving effects. Again, for those of you who are using force feedback, I'm using the Logitech G920, so I'm gonna leave this to on. Uh, but of course, you can turn that off if for some reason you do not want to use the force feedback. Then we get into the strength itself of the force feedback. I usually use this uh, at maximum strength simply because for me the G920 does not have very strong force feedback so this will be very much about personal preference. So by default I believe it is somewhere uh, either in the middle to maybe around two-thirds or so but again for me personal preference I use it at full strength. And then impact effects. Um, this is whenever you hit something. So when you have a wreck, hit another car, hit the wall, and so on, do you want to feel those effects? After that, we get into the dead zones and the sensitivity. So if we start by looking at the dead zones, there's not a whole lot of reason that you would want to use the dead zone either for uh, the wheel or the pedals. However, one, that, one reason that I can think of is if you have maybe an older set of uh, wheel and pedals that maybe the potentiometer is starting to go bad and it doesn't work quite as well as it used to, that might be a good reason to use some of the dead zones so that you can work through some of that noise that the older uh, potentiometers uh, have generated. For me, that happened with an older uh, G920 wheel and pedal set that I had. The throttle potentiometer started to go bad, so I would use just a little bit, maybe one or two clicks of dead zone for it, just so that it didn't constantly show that the throttle was being applied. But again, that should be uh, only for uh, special circumstances and not something that I would recommend using on a regular basis. But you can see that all of these by default are off, and that is to the far left, which will be in stark contrast to the sensitivity area, where normal for the sensitivity is right down the middle. And let's talk a little bit about uh, each of these. Again, by default, not a whole lot of reason to come in and adjust these, as you'll have the ability to adjust the setup for any of the cars that you're going to be uh, running with. And of course, that's something we do a lot of here on the channel is provide those setups and discuss those things. So I would recommend using the setup to change the handling of the car rather than uh, making a lot of changes to this area. But let's talk a little bit about it just in case. Starting with the steering range. By default, if I make no adjustment to the steering range with my 900 degree uh, Logitech G920 wheel, then once I test the sensitivity, then I can go to the full end of the range with about 90 degrees of uh, travel in the wheel. 
However, if I take it to the far right, test the sensitivity again, I'm going to have to go twice that far. So 180 degrees of rotation before I get there. And then, as you might expect, if I go to the far left, test the sensitivity, I'm only going to have to go about 45 degrees before I reach the edge of this testing zone. So again, not something that you're probably going, going to want to adjust very often, but just in case you did want to adjust, that's how it's going to work. Then the steering sensitivity. This is something that can really cause you a lot of trouble if you start messing around with it. But by default, again, not making any change, leaving it right down the middle, the wheel responds with equal amounts of sensitivity both uh, at the beginning of the rotation, meaning at dead center, and as well as I move it in either direction, getting farther and farther from uh, dead center. However, if I move this farther and farther to the right and then test the sensitivity, I am barely touching the wheel and you can see it is very sensitive around dead center. So again, not something that I would recommend. However, if I go the other way, if we move to the far left and test, test our sensitivity again, then the wheel responds very lightly. I have to move the wheel a good bit before it even starts to recognize that I've moved it at all. So. Um, if you find yourself with a wheel that is maybe a little older, maybe the um, the sensitivity has been thrown off uh, by the potentiometer uh, for the wheel, then maybe you have to adjust the steering sensitive just a little bit, um, particularly if it's too sensitive around dead center as you first start to move the wheel. But for the most part, uh, most people I would imagine are going to leave this at dead center and leave the sensitivity at uh, the normal amount. Then we get to the brake and the throttle range. These are going to work uh, the very same, so we'll take a look at the throttle itself. So by default, if I test the sensitivity while making no adjustment, we get a nice smooth movement as I move the pedal, or at least as smooth as I can get with the G920. However, if I move this to the right and test the sensitivity again, then it means that I only need about half of the throw of the pedal or half of the travel of the pedal before it gets to max throttle. So again, this could be helpful if you have older pedal sets. The potentiometers may not be working exactly right. Uh, for me, this happened with an older wheel and pedal set that I had where that throttle pedal would not register full throttle very well at all. So by adjusting the range a little bit, I was able to get it to full throttle and keep it there. But again, what I'm showing you in today's video are the extremes. However, if we move to the far left and test the sensitivity again, it gets a much smoother feel to it, and I do not get to full throttle until I reach the full travel of the pedal. And you can see any little bit of movement that my foot has on the pedal to move it around at all, it starts to get a little jumpy. So again, be careful about making huge adjustments to these sensitivity areas. And again, the brake range is going to work very much the same as the throttle. So again, thank you guys so much for joining me. Hopefully this wheel setup guide has helped you with your enjoyment of SRX, the game.